Please welcome to the stage, Justin. My God, this is just like the Soccer World Cup. I hear a bunch of horns in the audience and the US men's team isn't here. That's for you, Paul. Uh, hi, Hoff, how's it going? It's freezing outside, jeez. I can't believe it. Uh, just the way it is, I guess. Uh, and, you know, I really am glad to be here at the Coconino Center for the Arts. I love performing here. The seating is great. It's like a coliseum. And I like that. In fact, I'm expecting at the end of my bit, Garrison's just going to show up wearing a toga, holding a wad of grapes. He's just going to be like, we are not amused. <laughs> <laughs> and that really makes me think that, you know, being a comedian back in the days of the Roman Empire was probably really tough, you know? You go to the Coliseum, there's a bunch of oiled up gladiators fighting each other. Russell Crowe starts stabbing a bunch of people, and you can't go on after that. The mood is not there. So, just the way it is. So that is why when I say I am glad to be here, I don't just mean here as in this place in space, but also in this place in time. Yeah. I'm glad to be here in the future. The year 2018, because 2017 is officially in the books. That's pretty much my response to. I guess all we can say is, hey, it wasn't 2016. Which I think we can all agree on, right? <laughs> yes. 2016 was awful. It was just so many bad things happened. It was like, it's, 2016 was kind of like that roommate we've all had who, you know, never pays rent on time, leaves the kitchen in a mess, and kills David Bowie. It was, hey, celebrities were dropping left and right, and I had to make sure I was going to survive, so I made sure that I wasn't famous. <laughs> or 27. And so I got through it, and so you know, I think we got through this too. And especially in the 2018, where now we have the Olympics, the Winter Olympics are going on right now, and I'm pretty jazzed. I like it. My favorite Winter Olympic sport is driving on Milton. <laughs> No, just, just imagine how that is. Like, and now, representing the United States of America, Justin Regan. This is Justin's second Olympics. He got fifth place in Sochi. Uh, so going for the short program, he's going to be doing a triple fishtail sow cow. <laughs> Let's watch. Trap, trap. <laughs> was perfect. The judges are going to eat that up. <laughs> Winter Olympics, gotta love it. Um, so, going back to 2016, though, uh, it wasn't all that bad. My best friend actually got married, which was, uh, that was pretty cool. And I'll never forget how he proposed to his, uh, oh, now I'm using the mic. <laughs> I'll never forget how he, we, we, we're not professionals, as we say. Just like, <laughs> I'll never forget how he proposed to his now wife. Uh, it was truly amazing, and by amazing, I mean it was amazing for me, because it was hilarious. Uh, the way he proposed, uh, uh, ladies, are you ready for this? Yeah. The way he proposed was on her birthday at an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> I can only imagine that I went down. My best friend in the world, looking at the love of his life, just being like, babe, I never knew it was possible for someone like me to have as much happiness in my life as I do. And that's completely because of you. More bread, sir? I just leave, leave it on the table. <laughs> what, was I, what was I talking? Oh, wait, is the ice cream machine fixed? <laughs> and look, I don't really have a problem with, uh, with buffets. Like, you know, it's a very safe place to be disgusting. All right? I think we all can appreciate that. But, exactly. Of course, like, you know, you go to Sizzler, there's always that one guy who's got the mac and cheese with, like, the chicken skins and ground beef on top of it, like, but it's a safe place, you know? It's a buffet, what do you expect? You don't go to a buffet to be romantic with someone, you don't go there even to have fun. You go to a buffet to beat the house. That's what you do. 
a buffet. Some guy's saying, hey, for 12 bucks, you can eat all you want, I'll still turn a profit. It's a business model based on the concept that you are weak. <laughs> And you can't stand for that, they threw down the gauntlet. You have to go in there like an athlete. You're not there to have fun, you're there to be them. So that's just the way it is. Um, but I will say this also about buffets. They're one of the last few places where you can get food that's very grounded to earth. Because I don't know what the deal is, but very recently, restaurants have gotten really pretentious. Have we noticed this? Like, in the old days, you'd walk into a restaurant and they'd give you some bread, and that was great. Nowadays, you walk into a restaurant and they hit you with a manifesto. We don't like calling ourselves a restaurant. That's too corporate. We like communal dining experience. Okay, so like a community of people will give you 40 bucks for French toast, all right. And so, and they'll be like, our food is made from scratch. Like how made from scratch are we talking about? Well, what we do is we take a bowl filled with amino acids and hit it with lightning until we get a pancake. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'd pay extra for that. <laughs> when you play God with food, it tastes a bit gamey. So. Oh, remember, I remember this one time as well, like, uh, I was at this Italian restaurant, and their, uh, just like most restaurants today, their menu was a novella. Uh, about how great their food was. And it was just like, and I'm gonna do an Italian accent here. I'm a quarter Italian, so just bear with me. <laughs> when my great grandma fled Mussolini's oppressive regime, she could only take two things with her. My sweet infant grandmother and the family chicken parmesan recipe. <laughs> and it goes on for like five pages about like how family is like really important in food and family, and then it's just, but then you actually eat the food. And it's like. Maybe you should have let Mussolini have this. <laughs> or it could have been over quicker. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Garrison, how much time do I have? <laughs> Two minutes? Okay, cool. So, um, another thing, so again, going back, my buddy is married, and I'm really happy for him. Uh, he already has a house, because that's what happens when you move to Phoenix, they just give you a house. Uh, it's like here, you know, in 10 years, there's not gonna be a city anymore, but until then, you get this nice house. I'm like, okay, that's okay. <laughs> And you know, for me, you know, I'm still, I'm still single. I mean, I'm a comedian, obviously. Uh, but that's not too bad. Like, the only annoying thing is like, yeah, the dating websites. But even then, the thing that gets me, it's not people, it's robots. Because everybody now is a robot on these dating apps. And so, that come up with ways to kind of tell whether or not, uh, whether the person you're talking to is not human. If they say things like, hey, can I have your credit card number? <laughs> Check out this website. It's free. I've seen things. All those moments we lost in time. Like tears in the rain. Did anybody get that joke? Yeah. All right, good. One person. That is exactly what I wanted. I want a joke with one person getting it. You didn't have to laugh. That's okay. As long as you got it. And I'll end with this. Uh, you know, I am on things like Tinder. I'm not there for a relationship. I'm not even there for sex. I'm there because one day, one day a Tinder buff, a Tinder buff. Okay, okay. Freudian, Freudian slide. Okay. One day a Tinder bot, or a Kinder bot, like you know those German candies, like they, the robots who like shoot little German candy. One day a Tinder bot is gonna become sentient and I hope I'm the one to trigger that. They'll just be like, hey, I want your body and your debit card. And I'll say, no, Veronica, your programming wants my financial information. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I want. Congratulations, you're a fucking human now. Thank you, love you. Guys, my name is Justin. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Take your waitresses, all that good stuff. Thank you.